We turn now to the view from inside the Kremlin and an interview with President Vladimir Putin's chief spokesman, Dmitry Peskov. He's also the deputy chief of staff to Putin. Special correspondent Ryan Chilcote, who was just reporting in Russia for us for the last several weeks, spoke with Peskov this morning. Dmitry Peskov, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Over the weekend, we heard uh, President Biden call President Putin a butcher and say that it is impossible for him to remain in power. President Biden then said that he was not advocating for regime change. And yet uh, you have said that the Kremlin still finds these comments alarming. Why? Well, it's quite alarming. First of all, it's, it's, uh, first of all, it's personal insult. And uh, one can hardly imagine a place for a personal ins insult in rhetorics of a political leader, and especially of a political leader of, uh, of the greatest country in the world, of the United States. So uh, we're really sorry about that. And uh, his uh, statement about uh, whether, whether Putin should not or should be in power in Russia, of course, is completely unacceptable. It's not for the United States president to, to, to decide who is going to be and who is who is a president of, of the Russian Federation. It's people of Russia who are deciding during, during the election. I want to ask you about nuclear weapons and clear some things up. There's still quite a bit of confusion about Russia's position. We heard yet another official over the weekend, this time former President Dmitry Medvedev, say that Russia reserves the right to use nuclear weapons if it faces an existential threat, even if the other side has not employed nuclear weapons. So could you please clarify for us what exactly would amount to an existential threat to Russia? For example, if you were unable to achieve your objectives in Ukraine, even though there's no one fighting in Russia, there's no strikes on Russia, could that be perceived as an existential threat? Well, first of all, we're we have no doubt that all the objectives of our special and military operation in, uh, in Ukraine will be completed. We have no doubt about that. But uh, any outcome of the operation, uh, of course, is not a reason for usage of a nuclear weapon. We have a security concept that very clearly states that only uh, when, when there is a threat for existence of, of the state in our country, we can uh, use and we will actually use nuclear weapons to eliminate the threat for the existence of our country. Uh, let's keep all this, uh, well, let's keep these two things separate. I mean, existence of the state and special military operation in Ukraine. They have nothing to do with each other. But at the same time, if you remember the initial statement of the president when uh, he ordered the operation on the 24th of February, uh, uh, there was a part of his statement warning different states not to interfere uh, in, in the affairs between Ukraine and Russia during this operation. He was very strict in his warning, and he was quite tough on that. And I think that everyone understands what he meant. But he meant that he would use nuclear weapons. He was suggesting he would use nuclear weapons if a third party got involved in the conflict. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. But but he was quite bold in saying that do not interfere. If you do that, we'll uh, we have all the all the possibilities to prevent that and to punish all those who are going to interfere. Uh, look, Mr. Piskov, if you stick to your uh, the dictionary definition of existential threat that we were discussing. Uh, clearly nothing that is taking place or is even really, quite frankly, imaginable uh, uh, that, that could take place uh, could reach that bar of threatening the existence of the Russian state. So why not just clear this up right now? Why can't you, on behalf of Russia, rule out the use of nuclear weapons in this conflict right here? No one is thinking about using, about even about the idea of using a nuclear weapons. President Biden also this weekend warned President Putin to not even, as he put it, quote, even think about going on one single inch of NATO territory, close quote. Can you imagine a situation where Russia would feel it necessary to bomb or send forces 
into a NATO country during this conflict? Well, if it's not a reciprocal act, so if they don't uh, make us do that, we cannot think about that, and we do not want to think about that. The U.S. Uh, and other nations, as you're aware, say Russia is committing war crimes in Ukraine. They say your forces seem to be deliberately targeting civilians in your operations there. The International Criminal Court has launched an investigation, and the prosecutor at the International Criminal Court says that Russia has not responded uh, to his request for contributions. If you're not doing anything wrong in Ukraine, why not cooperate with the ICC? We do not accept the jurisdiction of uh, ICC. Uh, we we did not uh, we did not uh, acknowledge it before, and we do not accept it right now, and we are not going to accept it uh, further. So about uh, about the civilian targets, actually, it's a very important question. You have to know that uh, from the very beginning of the special operations, Russian military had a very strict order from the chief commander not to aim at civilian targets. And they're not doing that. They're not shelling houses. They're not shelling um, uh, apartments. They're not shelling civil objects. They're only shelling and they're aiming objects of military infrastructure in the context of uh, one of the main goals of the operation, demilitarization of, uh, of Ukraine. Then who is ruining the infrastructure, the civil infrastructure of Mariupol, for example? And those Nazi battalions um, uh, inside Mariupol, they're simply killing those who would like to, uh, to escape from the city. And uh, these Nazi battalions, they are using the apartments as a shelter for their guns, for their armaments, for their tanks, for their snipers, uh, thus ca causing the, the uh, reciprocal fire. So it's not Russian military who are doing that. Well, Dmitry Sergeyevich, I would say, in all fairness, you know, everyone uh, outside of Russia has been watching hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage that has come out of the country showing widespread targeting of uh, civilian uh, infrastructure, apartment buildings, theaters, hospitals. I, I want to ask you briefly about sanctions uh, and specifically uh, energy supply. Western European countries right now get a lot of their gas, as you're well aware, from Russia. They currently pay dollars and euros for that gas. Vladimir Putin has said he wants them to pay in rubles. So it looks like we have a stalemate here. Will Russia churn off uh, the tap? Will it cut off its gas exports to Europe if those countries refuse to pay for that gas in rubles? I don't know what is going to happen when they when they reject this possibility. Uh, so as soon as we have the final decision, we'll look what can be done. But definitely, we're not going to uh, to make a charity out of that and to to send uh, gas uh, free of charge to to Western Europe. It's kind of a binary thing, right? Uh, it sounds like yeah. President Putin is insisting it gets paid in, in rubles. They're insisting they will not pay in rubles. So my <laughs> question simply is. Are you going to turn off the gas? Oh, well, it depends. It, well, no payment, no gas. How concerned are you, Mr. Piskov, that some of your best clients, your best customers for European gas, Germany, uh, a number of European countries are now turning their backs uh, on Russia and Russian gas? Doesn't that give you a, a pause about the future of Russia's economy? Well, this is, of course, this is what we wouldn't want to see, actually. Uh, in our reality, but but we have to adapt ourselves to new conditions. And unfortunately, those conditions, they are quite unfriendly, and they are enemy, enemy-like for us. We entered the phase, the phase of a total war. And we in Russia, we feel ourselves among, amongst the war, because uh, Western European countries, uh, United States, Canada, Australia, they actually, they actually, they are leading war against us in trade and economy, in uh, in seizing our properties, in seizing our funds, 
in uh, blocking our financial relations and we have to adapt ourselves to new reality. You have to understand Russia. You have to understand Russia, what was the reason of starting that race? For a couple of decades, we were telling uh, the collective West that we are afraid of your NATO's moving eastwards. That we, are, we, we do afraid of NATO's getting closer to our borders with its military infrastructure. Please take care of that. Don't push us into the corner. No. Then we said, listen, guys, we are not happy with this coup in, uh, in Ukraine. And uh, you, you have a guarantees by, by Poland, by France, and by Germany. You, you would probably remember uh, the document with the signatures of the relevant foreign ministers. Uh, no reaction. Then we said, listen, guys, we are not happy with the possibility of Ukraine's getting in, into NATO because it will endanger us additionally and it will ruin the balance of mutual deterrence in Europe. No reaction. Then we said, listen, guys, we, we want equal relationship. We want to take into account each other's concerns. If you don't into account our concerns, then we will be a little bit nervous. No reaction completely. Uh, there are so many more NATO forces now closer to Russia than they ever were as a result of this conflict. Do you feel like in your efforts to address uh, your concerns, you've made the situation worse? Well, uh, the situation is quite concerning. You're right. You're right. But we're wise enough to understand that previously, before, prior to that region, NATO was doing the same, but with a smile on its face and gradually. We're deeply convinced that NATO machine is not a machine of cooperation and it's not a machine of security, it's a machine of confrontation. Dmitry Piskov, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your invitation.